Hey, in today's bass lesson, I'm gonna show you four legendary funk bass riffs that you'll all know and show you how I've been playing them wrongly for well over 20 plus years. I'll see you inside the lesson. So one of the things that's super easy to do as a bass player is to start subtly changing a bass riff or bass line over time. It's a really natural thing to do. So one of the things I suggest all my students do is go back and revisit bass lines that I've been playing for a period of time. Today I'm going to show you four funk bass lines that I've been playing for well over 20 years and I'm going to show you the bass line and also show you how I've subtly changed them and what I've done to correct that. But first off, I would love to know what's your favorite funk bass line please let me know in the comments below so before we hit the lesson content I want you to know there's a completely free PDF which will show you the four bass riffs we're covering today written out in standard notation and tab there's a link in the description below where you can grab your free copy so the first bass riff we're gonna look at today is play that funky music this is a one bar bass riff in the key of E which sounds like this So let's take this apart and split this into two sections. So the first section is three notes long and it's simply an open E, a D at the fifth fret on the A string, and then an E at the seventh fret on the A string. And this is the first half of the riff. So let's take a look at the second half of the riff. This starts off with an open E, which is played right at the end of the third beat on the last 16th note. And then it goes into classic box shape stuff, which falls really nicely under the hand. So four 16th notes, so an A and a B at fret five and fret seven on the E string respectively, and then a D and an E at fret five and fret seven on the A string. So we end up with this five note phrase. What I suggest you do is hammer those two notes on like that. So they work in pairs like this. So let's put that one bar bass riff together. So it's a great riff which falls really nicely under the hand. So this is where things get interesting. We also play this bass riff in the key of G and play that funky music and the key of B flat or over those respective chords. So what you'd expect to happen is to use classic box shape stuff is we'd play and then use the open A to bounce off and then C, D, F, G like that. So what actually happens is the original bass line, which I've only just realized when I revisited, it just plays two octave notes. So rather than this, it plays this. Just a subtle difference, which sounds really great. Then it does exactly the same thing when we go to the B flat, which is, and then we use the open A again. This is more of a percussive note that we just bounce off. And then we play that shape over the hand like this. So that is the bass riff to play that funky music. I'm gonna have a jam with a backing track now so you can hear what these ideas sound like in context. So the next bass riff we're gonna look at is the bass line from Pick Up The Pieces by The Average White Band. This is a two bar bass line in the key of F minor, which sounds like this. So this is only three notes and it falls perfectly under the hand using the box shape. So it starts off in with an F like that. And then halfway through the second beat, it goes to an octave F and then straight back to the E flat like this. So this is what the first three notes sound like. Three, four. One. 
And then right at the end of the second beat, we go back to the F like this. So that's the first bar. Don't be fooled, this is quite a simple, straightforward bass line, but one of the things you'll find about funk music, it can often be really simple and straightforward, but that can be deceptive because it makes it harder to place the notes sometimes and really get that groove dialed in. So let's look at the second bar now. This is a simplified version of the first bar because all it does is this, one, two. So that is simply an F, going to the octave F and then straight back to the E flat. Now this is the really interesting thing. When I revisited this track and listened to the original again, I had always played that second bar E flat long, so it's But when you listen to it, all the notes are short. And it gives that really clear daylight on the last two beats of the bar. So this is what the riff sounds like. So it sounds great playing it really simply like this, but if you leave the correct rests like the last two beats of the last of the second bar, this is a great point to start putting in some fills. You could even put that fill in from the last beat or play that funky music. So you could go, which sounds like this. So there's loads and loads of fills and ideas you can put forward, but don't forget the space is the most important thing with a funk bass riff like this. So let's hear what it sounds like in context with the backing track. So just before we hit bass riff number three, I'd love to ask you guys, if you're enjoying this lesson, please like and subscribe to the channel because we release a new lesson every single week, just like this one designed, especially for the beginner to intermediate bass player. There's a red button somewhere around this video and you'll be the first to know when a new lesson goes live. So bass riff number three is Brick House by the Commodores, which of course had Lionel Richie on lead vocals. This is a two bar bass line in the key of A minor, which sounds like this. So let's take this apart a kind of mini phrase at a time. So the first two beats is three notes, which is simply an A at the fifth fret, a C at the third fret on the A string, and a D at the fifth fret on the A string, which sounds like this. And again, and then the second two beats of the first bar are simply a G, a G sharp and an A. And so we have this kind of syncopated pushed off beat feel, which sounds like this. So the G is on the beat, then the G sharp is just before the fourth beat, and then the A is halfway through the fourth beat. So the phrase sounds like this. Then we'll put the whole of that first bar together and do that again. So what you'll discover with a lot of funk bass lines is they have a nucleus which kind of stays the same and then maybe the second part is slightly improvised and this is where you can break out a little bit. And so when I revisited the original, I found a variation when I first listened to it that I'd never heard before. This is typically how I play it and I recommend to my students to play it. So the first sort of phrase of the second bar is this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hammer on a G to an A and this is placed uh, halfway through the first beat, like that, two sixteenth notes, and then we land on C at the third fret on the second beat. So we end up with this. And then what we do is we go to a D, and then we go to an E, and then back to the C like that. So, so play the whole phrase. That last C is just at the end of the second bar, oh, second beat even, so we end up with this. And then 
Right at the end we have of the fourth beat, we have these two pulled slap notes, which just get your finger under the string like that, and then we go from a G to an A, and that takes us back to the A at the beginning of the first beat of the two bar phrase. So the second bar sounds like this, three, four. And again. So the thing that I heard when I listened to this again, what a bass player on the original record is doing, he's actually doing this. He's doing this hammer on and pull off at the foot on the second bar. And then he just literally plays the D and then the E to the C. Like that. Just a subtle difference that you hear when you revisit tracks. So let's hear what this sounds like in context with the drum track. So the fourth riff we're gonna look at today is from the pre-chorus of the legendary Stevie Wonder tune, Superstition. This is a riff which is doubled with the horns. It's a two bar riff in the original key of E flat minor, which sounds like this, three, four. Now, this is quite a tricky riff because this is in an awkward key of E flat minor. Many, many guitar bands push this up a half step into the key of E because it falls much more naturally on the bass guitar. And for many years, I played it in this key, but as soon as I started working with horn players, it came back down to the original key of E flat because it sounds much better and is much easier for those guys to play. So let's take this apart a phrase at a time. So this starts with two offbeat E flats, which is at the sixth fret on the A string. The first one is placed halfway through the first beat, and the second one is placed just after the second beat. So it sounds like this, three, four, three, four, bam, bam like that. Then to move on into the next phrase, the next four notes, we go down to a G flat, an A flat, and a B flat, and then a D flat. So those first three notes are at fret two, fret four, and fret six of the E string, and then fret four on the D string, like that. So we end up with this phrase. And what I suggest you do to make this really much more playable on the bass guitar is play one note and then, and then hammer that on. So slide the first note, hammer, and then play the fourth note like this. So this is one of these things, when I revisited this track uh, probably four or five years ago, I realized I'd been playing this wrong for nearly 15 years because what I'd done is I'd played this chromatic phrase which full, fell really nicely under the hand. Instead of going, what I'd done was this, like that. Nobody ever noticed, so often these little kind of changes you make can often blend in really nicely, but it's always good to revisit the original so you know what the composer intended. So the first two phrases sound like this. And again. And then the third phrase, which is on the fourth beat uh, of the first bar, is simply this. And that is a B to two E flats. And that is on the 16th note, the second 16th note, the third and the fourth respectively. So it's three, four, three, four. So the first bar sounds like this. And again. Now let's go into the second bar and look at the first phrase of that. And this is simply an E flat back to a D flat, so fret six, fret four, and then back to the E flat and fret six, so it sounds like this. 
I'd recommend hammering the last two notes like that. And then there's just four notes to go like after fin to finish it off. And so if to finish it off, it is an E flat and then up to a B flat, to a G flat and to an E flat like this. So it sounds like this. And that is simply an E flat minor triad. So to put that second bar together is the and again. So to put both bars together, it's this. And again. So that is a really cool legendary bass riff to get under your hands. Let's hear what it sounds like in context with the drum track. So guys, that's the end of today's bass lesson. If you've enjoyed these four legendary funk bass lines, make sure you download the free PDF so you can see them all written out in standard notation and tab. Also, if you're looking to understand more about the theory and how these bass lines are constructed, that's exactly what I teach inside my program, inside the Bass Lab Plus. There's a link in the description where you can check that out completely free for 14 days. Make sure you click that link and I look forward to helping you push your bass playing over at ebassguitar.com. Cheers, I've been James from eBassguitar. Catch you next time.